Hey everyone, and welcome to another All About RVs video. Today we're gonna to take a look at a brand new 2022 Arctic Wolf 287BH fifth wheel trailer. This is a bunkhouse trailer, so you're gonna have parents' bedroom and then a child bedroom in the back. We're gonna take a few minutes, walk through the inside and outside of the RV, then we'll close it all up and show you what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now up inside the all new 2022 Arctic Wolf 287 fifth wheel here. We're gonna spin our way through the inside, then we'll head back outside and check out the outside as well. So we're gonna start back here in the rear. This is the kids bunk room area, and then we'll kind of work our way forward. So you have two pretty good sized bunk beds here. We'll put the uh, sizes down in the description below. And some storage down below as well. Have a little ladder there to get up to the top bunk. And then you have a hanging closet up top and then some shelves in the closet below. Heat vent down there on the bottom, a little round duck spin around in here there are electric outlet and usb charger ports on the wall here same thing down below and you have a swing door for the kids to close for privacy but overall pretty cool little kids room back here back out to the main living kitchen area here We've got our kitchen on the right, so we'll start here. We have a 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator here. And basically, again, 12 volt powered, so as long as you've got a good strong battery, um, you can kind of do some boondock camping. If you're gonna go for more than a day or two, I would definitely probably add an extra battery. There is a solar panel on top of the RV and it does do some juicing of the battery system for that boondock camping. But if you're gonna be off the grid for a long period of time, I would definitely recommend adding some extra batteries and maybe even adding an extra solar panel. Down below, you have a pull-out drawer for some of your pots and pans if you wanna use it for that. Gray stone oven with the built-in light, three burner stove top has the flip up glass lid. There's also a little wood cutting board that you can detach back in behind there if you need to use that. A little bit of storage below the sink along with three full extending ball bearing drawer kind of drawers on the right. You do have a sink cover over top of your single ball sink here. High rise sprayer faucet, some USB charger ports back there on the wall also has a hand pump little soap holder as well and then electric outlet on the bottom of the uh, cabinet there and your hood range and fan traditional rv microwave it's basically just an electric microwave you have quite a bit of overhead cabinet space and you do have a little bit of room up above those cabinets where you could maybe put some decorations up there where those blue lights are There is some space up above that refrigerator as well. 110 volt ceiling fan instead of 12 volt. Now over here you have your slide out, electric slide. It is a U-shaped dinette, which does have two very large drawers that pull out. Again, great place for some pots and pans or maybe some extra blankets or whatever you want to put under there. There's an electric outlet down under there as well. And then you also, again, can make this into a bed if you need to for an extra guest to sleep on. Over on the side here, you have a tri-fold sleeper sofa. So you can kick back and relax if you want to, to watch TV or fold it out, lay down, watch TV, or again, have that extra guest over. USB charger port back here on the wall. And then they are still using these 
pull down zebra shades, these roller shades. Pretty nice shades. But these, uh, they've been using for a couple years now. Over here on the right, we have the electric fireplace, which is basically a fancy electric space heater, but it does help knock the chill off so you don't have to use your propane as much. Down on the right down there is a propane slash carbon monoxide leak detector. You have your AM, uh, FM radio here. The blue outside spray port hose is in there as well, but you would obviously keep that outside. Room to mount a TV. There's an optional TV available when you order the Arctic Wolf. Um, it's just kind of a plain Jane TV, nothing real special about it. Uh, so if you're looking for more of a smart TV or something kind of fancy, I would recommend getting that on your own aftermarket. But it does come with a little flat mount there. USB charger ports there, electric outlet, and your cable satellite antenna hookups and everything right there. And some more overhead cabinet space. Now, looking up at the ceiling here, you can see your Coleman air conditioner. It is ducted down the roof line here. And there's three speakers in the roof, and there's also two outside. Now, over here, there is a furnace return on the left. The box on the lower right is our electric box with some breakers and fuses. There's an electric outlet here, and again, some more USB charger ports, and you have a little coat hook holder area if you want to use it for that. All right, when you walk in the entry door, there is a huge closet slash pantry here. Little coat hook holder and stuff as well. Some shelving area back here. Now this goes all the way up to the ceiling and there is actually a light up there. Your step area going in and out of the bathroom bedroom area here, motion light, control panel center here. This is the new control panel. It's got a little motion sensor on it. Um, with your awning in and out button here, slide in and out button, water pump, water heater on gas. You have living room light, exterior light, interior light, fresh water tank, black water, gray water ones and twos, battery condition, connectivity for one control if you want to use that type of stuff, 110 water uh, heater switch, air conditioner furnace control. Wi-Fi One Connect Hotspot. Uh, this is basically prepped for that stuff. If you want to use it, you can kind of add on to it, subscribe to it. Uh, over here, we have some controls, LCI One controls. This here, some of your information that you'll need to know about that as well. But awning, level up, uh, lighting, monitor panels, slide. So there are some different things that you can control within this system as well. And over here, we have our voltmeter here telling us right now we're at 13.6 volts. Pretty much all vinyl floor throughout except for the slide out area down there. Bathroom area right here, we have a sliding door here to give us privacy. Step in shower does have a pull across door. Porcelain foot flush toilet. Now there is some storage below the sink. There is also medicine cabinet area there. And then you have a big linen holding closet right here as well. And there's also big turbo exhaust fan. Over here, we have our bedroom area. Swing door. You have a couple little cabinets up top on each side, and then there's a little drawer on each side as well. There's electric outlet and USB charger on the left. Electric outlet, and then there is a charger for a Bluetooth speaker that you have to buy aftermarket. 
I guess somebody must have donated those to the factory to try and get people to buy their portable Bluetooth speaker. So the factory put them in. Over here, you can kind of see what we got up here, the second air conditioner. That is an option. Again, Coleman air conditioner. Um, if you do need that second air or want it, talk with your sales guy. Some dealerships order with or without the second air. There are TV hookups over there at the uh, top corner. And down below, you have another little closet area as well and some storage down below. Plenty of room to maneuver around the bedroom area up here. It's pretty decent space for an RV. Heat vent down there, second air control, some light switches as well. And again, you have your swing door here. Now this bed actually does raise up. So you have storage underneath of the bed as well. All right, guys, we are going to head back outside. I want to show you around the outside and then we're going to come back in and close it up. I just want to show you what everything looks like closed as well. We'll be right back on the outside. All right, guys, we're now back on the outside of the all new Arctic Wolf 287BH for the 2022 lineup. We're going to start here on the door side of the RV and kind of work our way around. So first things up on the exterior, you do have a light gray fiberglass sidewall. You have a lower black metal skirting around the bottom of it. Graphics package changed up just a little bit for the 2022, but not a whole lot of difference from the 2021. You have power awning with the LED light strip built in. They're currently using a blue color on the outside and it has adjustable arms for tilting and water runoff. Also has the manual override crank in the top head of the front arm here. A little rubber plug you pull out, put your socket ratchet in there, crank it in manually in case of an electronic failure. Two outdoor speakers up here as well. The unit has two 20 pound propane tanks standard on the RV. So one on this side and one on the other. Now the main regulator, auto changeover regulators inside here. You have pass through storage compartment across the front here. It does have some motion lights in here as well. There is an electric outlet and a cable outlet in here also. So you could plug in a TV or something there and feed it through this opening here. You have the pet friendly leash latch on the RV as well. Now popping up here's a little picture. You can kind of see your front jacks here. Electric auto level jack system has the quick pull pins on the front. Also covered underbelly down below. You have the more ride step above step, triple entrance step, comes down, touches the ground, has adjustable feet on it, depending on the terrain you're in. And that step flips up inside the doorway and it has a 500 pound rating where a traditional hover step only has a 300 pound rating. So a little bit heavier duty step, doesn't shake the camper as bad when you or the kids are running in and out of the RV like a hover step might. Large folding entry handle to help you get in and out of the RV there. They went back to the traditional gray fiberglass matching door instead of the glass door that they were using last year. Um, so this kind of changed up a little bit. Next to the entry door there is gonna be your model number and some informational stickers there as well. It's very important to remember your model number because if you are out on a dealer's lot and you find something you like, for example, 287BH, Take a picture of it. That way you can tell the salesperson what you liked out there. Double axle, four wheel drum brakes. Also has the little tire pressure cap monitors. You can see on the back here, your electric rear stabilizer. And also underneath of there is a uh, gas line hookup for the two burner stove. So on this unit, you have a little dump sink thing right here. You have a two burner gas stove, a little electric mini fridge, and a little electric ice maker here. There's a little spray port on the side. A 
You have a little bit of storage back here under the bunk area. Then your six gallon gas electric water here on the rear corner here. Quite a bit of awning space and coverage here. So if you're out uh, on a sprinkly rainy day, it does kind of help keep you dry. But if it gets too windy, guys, roll up your awning so that it doesn't get damaged in the wind. This one, we put a ladder on the back of. Um, it's kind of up in the air whether they're gonna keep doing the ladder from the factory or not. They've told us no, they've told us yes. It's kind of been in and out. Right now, currently, they're talking about not doing a ladder anymore from the factory. Um, so we'll try to figure that out. There's been a huge part shortage in the RV industry on some parts, ladders being one of them being hard to get. So you may or may not see that on your unit. This was ordered also with the folding bike, or sorry, folding luggage rack on the back. So you could put maybe a small portable generator or bike or whatever you want to throw on the back of the RV back here. Traditional four inch square tube bumper. A lot of people store their dump hose back here. This is also comes standard with the little backup or observation camera you can see up there in the top section there. Um, this basically is an app that you download onto your phone and use your phone as the screen now is the way they've kind of designed this. Uh, so if you are wanting to use that observation camera while you're driving down the road, it would be a good idea to get some sort of nice mount holder for your phone to go in your vehicle so that it can communicate and you're not trying to hold your phone while you're traveling. Um, up top there, you can see picture of the roof here. This one again was ordered with two ACs. Uh, one standard, second option. 50 amp service is required when you're running two ACs like this. And this unit, you can obviously see here, has probably about a 25 or 30 foot power cord, roughly again, 50 amp service used. But up on that roof that we were just seeing there, a lot of places up there that need to be checked and inspected. Things like your uh, roof vents, your seals, plumbing stack vents, all that type of stuff. You need to get up there, inspect them, check them out from time to time, make sure that they can't leak. Below your power cord right here is an outside utility shower, hot and cold water, basically. Um, so if you make a mess over here, you can kind of hose things down. The kids get dirty and sandy or whatever from the beach trip, you can come back here and hose them down. Down below, you have a wastewater holding tank right here that you're gonna drain. Electric slide, we'll close that up when we go back inside here shortly. But this one, the customer put the slide out awning cover on. So this is kind of what it would look like if you wanted to do an awning cover on an RV. On around here to the front section, we have another little dump area up here. So you do have two dumps, gray black area here. And then there is back in behind there, your fresh water tank dump and some low point water drains. Furnace exhaust out right here. And then you have a light, obviously you can see there, but you also have your city water, black tank flush, cable satellite inlets and your fresh water tank gravity fill right here. The other 20 pound propane tank, slam lock baggage door with magnetic holder on this side as well. Now we're going to pop up some important informational stickers here. Uh, first one is going to be your main data sticker. And this has your production date, VIN number, some axle sizes, uh, things like that on there. But most importantly on here, your gross vehicle weight. Do not exceed that. That's the most you can load the vehicle to before you really risk breaking axles and frames and all that type of stuff. Uh, so gross vehicle weight on that sticker. Next is going to be your unloaded vehicle weight sticker. This is very important. Again, this basically tells you what the RV weighed when it rolled off the factory assembly line. Also has your VIN number on it and the length of the RV as well. Next is gonna be your cargo carrying capacity. That's the most gear you can load into it. Do not exceed that. Next is going to be your tire sticker telling you your tire size. 
but most importantly, telling you your tire pressure. Um, you wanna really kind of watch your tire pressure on RVs, very important guys. If you let that tire pressure get too low, it can't handle the weight of the RV and will blow out pretty easily. So make sure you check your tire pressure before each trip, guys, very important. Currently using the Rhino Pen Box. This is a newer box that's been used over the probably about the last year and a half, two years. Um, so if you do want to get some sort of fancier hitch, it is the Rhino box that they're currently using where a lot of these RVs used to use the Lippert 1621 HD models. Um, but now if you're looking for an aftermarket pen box or gooseneck or whatever, you got to find something to fit the Rhino box bolt pattern. Heavy duty fiberglass cap on the front of the RV here, has a couple LED light strips built in. Up front here in this storage compartment, you have your spare tire. You also on the right side have a battery, battery disconnect and some stuff over here on the right. On the outside of the door area right here, you do have your docking light switch for those front lights on the cap. And then you have your auto level jack buttons for your hitching up and unhooking down here and some instructional information there as well. All right, guys, we are going to head back inside. I want to close up the RV so you can see what it looks like closed. We'll be right back on the inside. All right, guys, we're now back on the inside of the RV here, and I just want to show you real quick what it looks like closed so you got an idea on everything here. Now, first thing you want to do, make sure your floor is clean. No rocks, pebbles, twigs, leaves, debris, kids' toys, dog toys, whatever. Make sure your floor is clean because the slide will run it over and you will damage your floor if you're not careful. Um, right here on your control panel, you're going to have your slide in and out button here. So first things up, we got a clean floor. We're gonna hit our button to bring the slide in. Again, electric slide, 12 volt powered. And basically, as long as you have a good battery, this thing will move in and out. So we're going to bring this all the way in here. Don't forget guys to check out the guys at Couches RV Nation. They are one of the largest internet wholesale dealers in the country, guys. will definitely save you a lot of money on a new RV. Uh, RV prices have kind of been bouncing all around right now due to the factory continuously changing and raising costs. So talk with your sales guys. They will definitely try and get you the best possible deal. They sell and ship campers all over the country, saving people a lot of money. So slide out is in here and you can still come back here load your fridge throw some things in your kitchen cabinets and stuff if you need to now you're not getting to the kids room from here you do have to put the slide out out to do that however if you are stopping at a rest area and you're taking a nap or whatever you know you could turn the u-shaped dinette into a bed let one of the kids sleep on the couch scenario whatever, you got a little bit of room down here where somebody could sleep. Now it does not affect getting to your bedroom and your bathroom and everything up here. So you can still come in, use your bedroom, use your bathroom just like you normally would. And when you take this thing back out, you are just hitting the out button here and taking her right back out. Again, guys, thank you very much for taking the time to watch my videos. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoy them. We've got loads of 2022 models coming in from many different brands, and I will be updating more and more of these things as they hit the lot. Thanks again, guys, for checking out my video.